Is ethics dead? Surely ethics must be universal and not sectarian or cultural. The problem we have is that the ethicists themselves are victims of bullying by the group think, by the group mind. So we need an ethics revolution. An ethics based upon conscience and intuition and an understanding of our human nature. This is primary. So we come back to basic ethics, simple ethics. So we start off, say, with Pavlov's dog. You know, say, so he rang the bell, the dog salivated, their stomach secretions in anticipation of the meal. So this is the, ethics is about our relationships with each other. The, the fundamental ethical problem is bullying. Bullying, forcing your ideas on others and making others into servants, slaves, or any form of mental slavery. And this is where ethics comes in. If ethics is not about ending mental slavery, then it is dead. But as I say, the main problem is bullying and the ethicists themselves are victims of bullying. That's why they are silent. Completely silent. They say nothing. Absolutely nothing. They're concerned with corporate ethics, medical ethics, but not, none of them with ethics, with universal ethics, with human nature, with things of value to us all, to our global community. So we must consider ethics itself. The questions we should ask are what is the intent behind the action? You know, why is this done? Why is this said? What is its purpose? You know, what is the intent? In criminology, it's the mens rea, the evil intent, the evil mind. So we just look at the mens rea of propaganda, of ideas, of concepts. See what the intent is. Now, the other aspect you know, is our human nature. And I started off with Pavlov's dogs because that is the fundamental way we are controlled with food. We're controlled with food. We control our children with food. The quickest way to a man's heart is through his stomach, which obviously Pavlov, Pavlov uh, took seriously with his dogs. But there are other hormonal secretions that are more important once the food control is established. And they are cortisol, which is associated with fear, and oxytocin, which is associated with love, with imprinting, with release. So you've got oxytocin, and these, you know, are tied in with the sexual hormones, which is obviously the basis of abuse, which should be, you know, the primary basis and understanding in ethics. So the sexual frustration, you know, the anger, you know, the anxiety, these are all levels of cortisol, fear. This is why, obviously, they have terror alerts, terrorist alerts, to increase the level of fear. There are no terrorist attacks. The terrorist attacks we know of are inside jobs, blatant inside jobs. But the ethicists are silent. 
they cannot see, they cannot speak. So it's the control of these two hormones, cortisol and oxytocin, that are fundamental. Now we see this in human life, in human development. You know, when a, you know, a child becomes, say, 15, 16, 17, then they fall in love and become a complete pain, completely obsessed with the person, the image of the person they love. This is natural. This is the oxytocin. The high level of the oxytocin, the imprinting of the beloved, the wanting to hear the lover's name, the constant repetition of the lover's name. You know, as a child, we get nightmares, we are frightened of the dark. These are all levels of cortisol. We retreat into the womb. This is why there is enuresis bedwetting, because in the womb we're living in an environment of urine. So the smell of the urine and the environment of the urine is comforting. This is human nature. Now when we are bullied, obviously we're in a state of fear, and the level of cortisol rises and we become traumatized. When we are traumatized, we are isolated. We cannot function with others because we're obsessed with our own problems, the secret bullying that is taking place, the secret cause of our fear. So the cortisol makes us traumatized and vulnerable and suggestible. And this is how we're enslaved through fear. This is how the propaganda works, always through fear. There's always an enemy, there's always a menace, there's always a danger. So you must listen to whichever puffed up, pompous, arrogant idiot who is in service of, of the, the system that is controlling you, the slave mistress, the slave master. Now, as I say, unfortunately, <coughs> the ethicists are themselves victims, victims of bullying through group mind and group think. And those group mind and group think ideas are basically Christianity and the monarchy. It is said that these are fundamental aspects of society. And so they are sacrosanct. No one can criticize Christianity because there are Christians and we might disturb their feelings. So it's not politi cor politically correct. So meanwhile, because not politically correct, the evil is not dealt with and the problem goes on damaging our children, the next generation. The monarchy, the queen, is never criticised because she deliberately, she doesn't see, she doesn't do anything. She wipes her hands, clean them, everything. Nothing to do with her. She's just a figurehead. This is what they all say. But then if you criticise her, oh no, she's very hands-on, but it works very hard. But equally well, not allowed to criticise, not allowed to say anything. So when we get blatant corruption, like with Ponce Andrew, nothing is said, the ethicists are silent, no criminal charges, nothing is done. So we look at Christianity. A man nailed to a cross. Putting a man, the image of a man nailed to a cross into children's minds mental abuse, telling the child that the Jesus died for their sins, it is their sins, this is the reason why they nailed to the cross, this is evil bullying, this is bullying, this is terrorising the child's mind, but it's all glossed over, it is all sugar-coated, it is all sugar-coated, but there, at the heart, we all know 
The children have very vivid imaginations. The bogeyman, the evil witch, the pig, the wolf, the big bad wolf, going to blow your house down. Children have got very vivid imaginations. Having a man take nailed to a cross is totally unacceptable. It is totally unacceptable. We've got to wake up. The ethicists have got to wake up. It's no good saying, oh, this is a religion and there are people who believe this garbage. We must say, no, no, this is evil coercion and bullying. It's got nothing to do with anything. This crucifixion has got to stop. I do not want any child to know anything about crucifixion. There's no need to know. Why do they need to know about crucifixion? Maybe they need to know about all the horrors and tortures of Christianity and the Inquisition, of their brutal beatings of us in their schools, you know, in their prisons and on their galleys, you know, for 2,000 years of violence and horror and their garbage shoving Jesus down our throats, blood drinking, blood curdling, eating, eating his dead flesh. You know, surely, you know, some ethicist is going to wake up and say, evil, horrible crap that we must protect our children from. It is not acceptable to say this is pretty correct, not to criticise this, because this is increasing the level of cortisol in those vulnerable. It is traumatising them. It is breaking up our relationships with them. It is isolating them from the community and making them suggestible slaves and moronic monarchists and Christians following the, the, the pastor and the vicar who is doing the Lord's work, which is keeping his own middle class lifestyle and sending money back up to head office. When I was a child, we used to make a guy out of old clothes and stuff it with straw and go on the street, penny for the guy. Well, this is all Christians do, the penny for the guy. The guy is Jesus. He's not a real man, the virgin son of a virgin walking on water. I mean, don't be ridiculous. Don't be ridiculous. You know, he wouldn't go down as a children comic book hero. It's just a penny for the guy. Give me a penny for the guy. Give me a penny for Jesus. I'm doing the Lord's work. The Lord's work. Praise the Lord. What a joke. These are parasites. Living off our backs, pretending there's someone called Jesus that they're doing work for. But really it's for the system, it's for the queen, and it's to traumatise our children. They tell our children that we are sinners. They tell our children that we are sinners. Jesus Christ! Are we going to allow them to get away with this? Why are the ethicists silent? This is intended, the evil intent is to break up our families and to groom our children for their abuse. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Child abuse, stinking child abuse through all branches of Christianity. All of them living off our backs. But the ethicists are silent. The ethicists are completely silent. So this is how Christianity works. This is how the gospel scam works. You know, obviously, basically, it's a pyramid saving scheme. The, the priest vicar comes down and he's trained to save others. You know, he, some the voice of the dead Jew in his head tells him to save our children. I mean, what the hell is going on? Save our children from us. He tells our children that we are sinners to break up our families. He tells our children that man is bad. This is what they call original sin, to break up our communities. These Christians have stolen our holy lands. They've tried to steal our religious festivals, but completely failed. Father Christmas, the man in the moon flying around the earth in a single night, and the Easter Bunny, they're still number one. Jesus and nailing the poor Jew to a cross, you know, is shoved down our throats. And it's got to stop. It's a load of nonsense. 
completely load of nine, a concoction of psychotic bullshit to traumatize us and to break up our families. The very things that ethicists should be dealing with. But they're silent. Because they are victims. So they traumatize our children with Jesus' crucifixion, nailing him to a cross, and it's very revealing that this is sexual abuse. They call it the passion of the Christ, not the agony of the Jew, which is what it's, this racist abomination is. They call it the passion of the Christ. And then resurrection, you know, the big lie rising from the dead, physically rises from the dead. What a horror, you know, and then this jerks us all off with a resurrection, happy ending and a rising level of oxytocin. So the whole story, you know, the crucifixion increases the cortisol and then the resurrection increases the oxytocin. This is deliberate hormonal conditioning, manipulation, evil control, bullying of our human nature and done at the most impressionable time in a child's, you know, teenage years when they're going to fall in love and suddenly they're falling in love with Jesus who is a stuffed guy, you know, a dummy, a puppet to hypnotize, you know, it's like, you know, when they have a, an animal and, and the, the, the animals get imprinted on a human, they'll have some stuffed dummy there of the animal to try and pretend that's their mother. So they do that with Jesus. This, the, this, this man, who is no man at all, you know, he's the virgin son of, of a, a virgin. I mean, how ridiculous. He can walk on water. How ridiculous. You know, the Lord's Prayer comes from ancient Egypt. You know, do unto the others as they would do unto themselves comes from, you know, from the Upanishads, from the Analects, Analects of Confucius, you know, all predating Jesus. All the teachings of Jesus were in the Essenes, you know, 200 years before Jesus. All his teachings, the teachings of, of the teacher of righteousness in the book of, in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Not Jesus. Just the perfect teacher, the righteous teacher. This nonsense about nailing to the cross is from Mithras. It's a drug cult. You take the drug, you get high, on the second day you go to hell, and then on the third day you rise from the dead. It's a drug cult. It's a drug experience. But obviously they don't want the people to have a psychedelic experience. They want to control by hormonal manipulation. The crucifixion increase in the cortisol. The resurrection increase in the oxytocin imprinted on, you know, pretty old Jesus who can do no wrong. And then the blood drinking and the eating the dead flesh. This is all a part of the evil conditioning to make the child take part in the crime. So we've crucified Jesus, he's died for your sins, now we're going to eat him. So we're, we're co-conspirators in his crucifixion. We've taken part in this human sacrifice and now we're so traumatized because we've eaten a dead man. Doesn't it make you vomit? Doesn't it make you want to protect our children? Doesn't it? But as usual, the ethicists are silent. Completely silent. No ethics at all. Then we have the monarchy. Corruption begins at the top. In 1914, this royal family staged a family feud to divide Europe up, to start a war, to kill off a generation that was plotting a revolution against them. They deliberately murdered a generation of our finest young men, 
our ancestors, our ancestors seeking justice, this royal family murdered them. They staged a family feud. You know, some people say, oh, it's the military high command. The military high command are the royal family. The royal family organized it and schemed it because they could see revolution spreading across Europe and through England and through the British Isles. Revolution. So they started a war. The killing fields of the killing fields, the trenches, just a killing machine, nothing to do with a war. Sending men over the top into live machine gun fire is not a tactic of war. It's murder, it's mass bloody murder, sheer mass bloody murder by this psychopathic royal family. Total bunch of psychopaths. They murdered a generation, 16 million, the worst mass murder in history. And then, after the war, in 1928, when they saw that Rastafari was to be crowned king, a couple of weeks before his coronation as King of Kings, they made cannabis illegal. And then, when Edward VIII did not support the Italian invasion of Abyssinia and Ethiopia, the attack on His Majesty, they forced him to abdicate because of a woman making that they forced him to abdicate because of Rastafari. They then foisted on us George VI and then this Queen. And with this Queen they introduced a new version of the Bible because they knew that the authorised version literally prophesies Rastafari. His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie the first, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, revelations clearly and literally prophesies him as our Saviour without a doubt. Clearly and literally prophesies marijuana growing everywhere. This is how the Bible ends, this is how the Quran ends with marijuana growing everywhere. So what have we got? We've got a Queen enforcing the laws against marijuana but, selectively, they do not stop Nigella Lawson and any of Cameron's Etonian clique smoking marijuana and growing it. They cannot stop me getting my deals on wheels from the skateboard crew who have been reliable sources of homegrown cannabis for, for eight years. So I praise the local gangs. Look online, see the sales of autoflowering cannabis which grows in two months in a 10 inch pot out in your garden. Very easy to grow. The police cannot control this, there's so much cannabis being grown, so many head shops selling pipes and bongs, so many people smoking of all classes, this is all predicted in Revelations. But the police continue to have stop and search, stop and frisk stealing ex -can expensive cannabis from the youth, stealing it, and then victimising certain individuals. Just victimising. The police and the courts know that all cannabis charges, all of them, are malicious prosecutions. But they are all obeying instructions coming down from the top from the Queen. It has got to stop. It's an evil tyranny. So, you know, the police know that we'll never stop cannabis. It's ridiculous. It's nonsense. Cannabis is our holy communion. It is safe. I've been smoking cannabis for 47 years.
but they make excuses that cannabis is dangerous, but really what is dangerous is that cannabis is our holy communion. We can reason together and we can see that corruption begins at the top. It was the Queen who signed us up for the illegal wars and Blair took the blame. Everybody blames Tony Blair. But he did it for a fee. He took the blame and, and got a fee, paid a fee handsomely. The Queen is the richest person on the planet and the largest landowner. And the youth have nothing. She has been propped up by debts because of the subprime fraud. But she hasn't lost anything. The youth have lost everything. Everything. They can see that she has ripped us all off. Corruption begins at the top. We need a great redistribution of wealth, practically, starting with the Queen's ill-gotten gains from our slavery, from her stolen goods in all her palaces from all over the world. But of course the ethicists are silent. The historians are silent. You know, the Queen can do no wrong. World War I was something to do with the Germans and they made us hate the Germans. No, it was, you know, a, a family feud staged to sucker us all in, using their crucifixion crap to get us all to volunteer, to be, you know, given a leg up over the top into the line of machine gun fire to be slaughtered so that we wouldn't be in part of a revolution against them. And now the Queen is... Now listen, you see, the Queen has stolen all the land. She owns all the land. We've got the, the, the floodplain fraud. She has been making money selling land on floodplains with planning permission. She gets the money from all the offshore wind farms. She will get the money from fracking. She is sending in her police thugs to enforce fracking. And we do not want fracking. No one wants fracking on their own land. The National Trust don't want fracking. Look to Colorado. They've legalized marijuana and they have stopped fracking. This is where we should go. Now Colorado needs to look at the crucifixion merchants in its midst and realize that they are a curse on their community. They are de destroying their people's minds with their crucifixion nonsense. Now listen, that's how they work. Cru Christianity isn't just a cesspit of child abuse, it is intrinsically child abuse. It traumatizes increases the level of cortisol with the, with the crucifixion. It releases that with the resurrection and the oxytocin. See, it's an hormonal manipulation. Ring a bell and you salivate. The ethicists are silent. Silent at this manipulation. Silent because they are also victims of bullying. Their qualifications come from institutions authorised by the Queen. All of these people swear an oath of allegiance to the Queen. The Official Secrets Act is an oath of allegiance to the Queen. To tyranny. To this crucifixion crap. But the ethicists are silent. They don't question anything. Nothing. They don't understand human nature. They don't see the manipulation. They are silent. They have no conscience. They are dead. We need an ethics revolution.